Hey what's up guys welcome to the tutorial number 5 of the series Unity Shader Graph and today we are going to see how to create a cartoon or maybe a stylized water depending on your point of view. Anyway by the hand we will have something like this water with the ripples moving around and it also has some nice light reflection distortion and it also has the foam which is the hardest part. Everything is available on my Patreon page, you can get access to these shaders and many more shaders like fire, portals, ocean water, etc. And there's also plenty of game effects. Links in the description, go check it out. With that being said, let's see how we can do this. So let's start by creating a PBR graph. Rename it to Cartoon Water if you want and double click it to open. Alright, so first things first, we want to change the surface to transparent, since it's going to be water and we want some transparency. Then we can go right ahead and create the color property, which is going to be our base color for the water. And it's going to be a bluish color, something around this. You can choose other color, it's up to you, obviously. Oh, and let's also change the mode of this color to HDR, so you can have control over the intensity. And this is going to be directly connected to the albedo input of the PBA master. And we are going to build the rest of our cartoon water on top of this, basically the ripples. So, there are several ways to achieve the stylized or cartoonish water, it's true, but we are going to use the Voronoi node, which is a good starting point to generate the ripples. Connected to the emission input of the PBA master, this Voronoi will need to move over time, otherwise it will be a very static water. So, let's use a time node where we will drag from this time and create a multiply node. Let me just collapse this before it all gets messy. Let's also go ahead and create a vector 1 or a vector 2, if you think it's necessary, to control the ripple speed. Connect it to the multiply and connect the multiply output to the angle offset of the Voronoi. And nothing really happens because we need to insert a value different than zero, obviously, in the ripple speed. Something around 1 for now, you can adjust this later. The next thing we can do is already add color to this. And let's create a multiply node and also add a color property here and call it ripples color. Change the mode to HDR so you can control the intensity of the ripples. And choose any color you want, I'm gonna choose a light blue. We can then connect it to the multiply node and replace the connection to emission. Let's also add another vector one in the properties panel that we are going to rename Ripple Scale. And this one is going to be connected to the cell density of the Voronoi node. Just like this, yeah, looking good. Let's just insert a value of around 3 in the Ripple Scale. Let's press Save Asset so we can go to Unity and see how this is looking. And we can create a material out of this shade with a right click. I'm gonna drag it to around here to materials folder just to keep things organized. And I'm going to duplicate one of these mini pools just to quickly show how this is behaving and what else we need to do. So let me just adjust the intensity of the ripples here, you can also do it. And also adapt the base color. Alright, it's starting to look like something already. And now basically it would be nice to have more control of the thickness of the ripples or the dissolve of the ripples, right? Yeah, that would be cool. But let's first in the shader graph, we actually want to add a little twist to the Voronoi. It's just a tiny detail that will make things look better and we can do that with a radial shear. Kind of like a spherical distortion, you know. And we can connect it to the UV input of the Voronoi. And let's decrease the strength to 1 in X and Y. Like I said, it gives a very minimal distortion and a simple touch, but it's nice. Anyway, now for us to have control of the ripples density or thickness, we want to use a power node. And as you can see, this is exactly what we need. Replace the connection and let's add a vector one and rename it to ripples dissolve with a default value of around 5. Connect it to the B input of the power node, by the way. And now it's starting to look much better. 
And by the way guys, we can always adjust the intensity of the ripples like this. Maybe this is a little bit too much, but anyway. Now we have much more control over the ripples thickness. And we can also adjust the base color, in my case I'm going to give it more saturation and it will immediately look much better. Anyway, the next thing, which is the light. If you have light in your scene, you will notice that we still are missing the control on how the light reflects of the water. And that's easily fixed by coming here and create some properties for metallic and smoothness. Let me push this one to the top and add another vector one for the gloss. In other words, for the smoothness. I'd rather call it gloss, but you know, it's up to you. Drag the properties to around here and connect them respectively to metallic and smoothness. Let's save this and head back to Unity. And as you can see, glossiness affects how the surface reflects the light. I'm gonna leave it at 0 0.1 for now, but I'm gonna change it later probably. And for the metallic property, I left this at minus 0 0.45 but don't use negative values. I just left because it looks good. Anyway, it's already looking really cool for a cartoonish or stylized water. But there's still room for improvement. For example, let's distort the light for when it reflects off the water surface because as it is now, the ripples aren't distorting the light. It's like a flat surface, you know? And that effect can be achieved by using normals. And I'm going to use a node called normal from height. Awesome node, by the way. And it's going to create normals out of the Voronoi. And we can also use a normal strength node to control the strength of the normals. Let's add a vector one to control the normal strength and connect it as well. All right, so let's see this in action and let's connect this to the normal input of the PBR master and save the shader. Alright, so I have already changed my metallic value to 0.1 and gloss to 1.3 by the way. So now, if you insert a value of 1 or 2 in the normal strength, it should be enough to start distorting the light. Of course you can input a higher value and it will create these sharp edges, but we don't really want that. Anyway, in my opinion it looks really cool. And let's also add a bit more depth to these normals by creating a simple noise or a gradient noise with 24 scale and we can actually copy and paste these two normal nodes with ctrl c and ctrl v just like this and i'm going to actually use this trend too but i really recommend you to create another vector one to control the strength of this simple noise anyway now we can blend these two normal maps with the normal blend node and as you can see they blend with each other nicely which is cool. And let's just replace the connection to the normal input. However, it will look much better if we make the simple noise move, because at the moment it's very static. So let's reuse the time node and create a multiply node like this. And we can add the vector 2 in the properties panel, call it normal speed with a default value of 0 0.5 in the X, which is way too much by the way, but we are going to decrease it later. <clears throat> and now we are only missing a tailing and offset node, which we can connect it to the simple noise, just like these guys, and it's moving. Way too fast, like I said, so I'm going to decrease to around 0 0.1, maybe even less. And you know what? I'm going to switch the simple noise with the granted noise, sorry guys. I think it looks much better. But of course you can try both. And I'm also going to disconnect the noise strength because it's way too strong with the gradient noise. I'm going to actually insert a value of 0 0.1 for now. And you can start to see how this simple trick can improve the aspect of the water. Let me actually increase the normal strength of the gradient noise to 0 0.5. I should actually create a vector 1 for this, but <laughs> anyway, it's looking much better and I really like these details. It's still moving a bit too fast, I'm going to decrease it to 0 0.05 and minus 0 0.01 in the y-axis. And 
yeah, it's looking really nice, I really enjoy this. So the cartoonish water shader is pretty much done. If you have made it this far, you have 90% of the cartoonish water shader done. But now comes the hardest part, the foam. And just a heads up, I'm going to go into a lot of details just for the more curious ones. Anyway, we want to start by creating a vector between the object position and the camera position. Basically, we want their distance from one another. And fortunately, we have nodes for that. We can use the position of our object in the world and subtract that with the position of our camera. And we get the distance between the camera and the object. Now, we want to test this distance between the camera and the object with the direction of the camera. And we can do it with a dot product. And let's connect the direction of the camera to A and the distance between camera and object to B. Dot product basically returns zero if the camera points in a perpendicular direction to the distance between camera and object and it will return one if it's in the same direction as the distance between the camera and the object. That's basically how it works. And we can see this in action if we connect the dot product to the alpha of the PBR master. You will notice that the closer we are, the more transparent it gets, because it returns zero, and the farther away we go, the more opaque it will be. The thing is that at this point it will return opaque after being only one meter away of the pool. Fortunately, we can remap those values to match how far the camera can see. So visually speaking, since zero is transparent and one meter away is opaque, it doesn't really matter if it goes two or three meters away, it's always opaque. And since this happens, we want to remap those values. So the zero, which is the minimum, is still going to be zero. But that one, we want to remap it to match how far the camera can see. And with a factor two, we can say that x, which is the minimum, which is also zero, is going to still be zero, but y, which is the maximum and it's also one, we are going to remap that one value to match the far plane of the camera, to match how far the camera can see. Let's see how this is affecting our pool, and we need to have in consideration how far the camera can see. I had a far plane of 10 meters, but I'm going to change it to 15. Now we can see that the shader takes in consideration those 15 meters of the camera and it will adjust the opacity accordingly to how far the camera can see. So the next thing we want to copy and paste this remap and let's create a vector one named foam offset. And basically we are going to add an offset to what comes out of the dot product and connect it to the remap, as well as the vector2, just like we did before. And now we want to interpolate between these two values, but we are going to use a smooth step instead of interpolation node. Edge1 is going to be our first remap and Edge2 is going to be our second remap. The in value is going to be our scene depth. It's basically a grey image that comes from the camera, similar to this one, which will return black or zero if it's close to the camera and one which is basically white in the farthest point. All the values between zero and one are gray. And the way a smooth step works is very simple. It has the edge one, the edge two and the in input values. And it has three possible outcomes. The first one says that it returns this hermit interpolation between zero and one, basically this curve. If in is bigger than the edge 1 and if it's less than the edge 2, meaning that only returns that curve if it's between these values. The second option says that it will return 0 if in is less than the edge 1 and the third option will return 1 if in is bigger than edge 2. And if we connect this directly to the alpha, nothing happens because we need to invert this with a one minus node. And now, in our case, we can see the smooth step in action, specifically if we start playing with the far plane of our camera. It will basically draw the foam as long as it's inside the range of the far plane, 
which is really cool to see this in effect actually. Now, you may be wondering why this is only showing the foam and all the rest of the water is clipped. Well, that is mostly happening because the alpha clip threshold is bigger than zero. So let's set it to zero and if we do that, we will no longer have those hard edges and it will have this nice fade. And if we even start increasing the foam offset, we may even start to see the rest of the water. But that's not how we want this to work. So what we need to do now is take in consideration the alpha values of the water and not only the foam. And firstly we need to split the Voronoi so we can have access to one of these values. I'm going to use the red channel and remap it so the zero outputs 0 0.1, the minimum value and the maximum value can be 3 or 5. If we connect this to the alpha, you will notice that we are starting to have transparency, but yes, we lost the foam, but we will fix that in a moment. And now we can even do one more thing, which is multiply this value and create a new vector 1, so we can have some control over the transparency of this water, with a default value of 1. And this is optional, you don't necessarily need to add this vector 1 to control the transparency of your water, it's up to you. But it looks cool. Alright, so now I'm going to make this very simple. And what we can do is simply add our foam to our alpha from the Voronoi. Just like this. And that's it, we have the foam applied to our water. And we can also control the foam offset, which is pretty cool. But it will be great also to control the intensity of the foam. And a fairly easy way to do it is by creating a color property. That is going to be our foam color. And we are going to change the mode to HDR and choose a whiter color for now. And now we can simply multiply this with our color replace the connection and that's it here you go you have the control of our foam intensity right here but if i change the color to red nothing really happens and that's because we are not connecting anything from the foam to the emission values so let's simply add our foam to the output of the Voronoi just like this Uh, let's save asset and depending on your values you will need to adjust this which is what i'm doing now and i also want to let you know that i'm simplifying a lot of things right here since water and foam are topics with a lot of depth literally but i believe you can get some pretty decent results with this shader so these are my final values if you want to copy them and I really like how this cartoonish or stylized water is looking. Of course, there's still room for improvement. You can, for example, add a texture to the foam, which is fairly easy. I believe you can do it. And I'm gonna leave it that for you to try. And there's also other things that you can improve. But like I said, water is a complicated topic. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to get access to this scene with all of these shaders, then make sure to visit my Patreon page, which is in the description, and you can get access to an awesome collection of visual effects for your game, according to your pledge. I wanna say also, thank you to all the patrons that supported me in last month, you guys rock, and I could be gladder to have you on board. And this time we are going to have a special thanks to the super mega patrons that supported me, which is James Finlay, Steven Chung, Goblin Plague, Ruan Mendiola, Tirita, Spence, Trey Klein, Christian Mercino, Eric C, Ben Myers, Artem Amitov, Carlos Geitz, Steve Bear, Hata Epson, and I'm really sorry if I pronounced one of your names wrong. You guys are awesome, you guys are super mega patrons. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.